Welcome to Life of Hair. My name is James Atkinson. Thank you for choosing to join in to this week's episode. Now, this week's episode is part two of Dylan's hair transformation. Last week, we showed you the haircut where we tidied up Dylan's hair, took the sides down, and basically produced what you see now. When I was talking to Dylan in the consultation, and um, you know he wasn't 100% sure what he wanted, I did talk to him about highlights, but I made a fatal mistake of saying to him, uh, about highlights and presuming he knew what I was saying. Uh, so we had a very interesting chat about what are highlights and that was good. In this particular instance, what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus it in quite a lot of lightness around the front of Dylan's hair, and then we're gonna gently taper out towards the back so that Dylan's hair doesn't look like a really blonde color on top and a dark color on the sides, giving in that kind of pint of Guinness effect. It's really important that we leave behind some of the natural texture uh, in Dylan's hair as well, so that when Dylan wears his hair without product in it, this color will provide him with contrast and separation to enhance the haircut rather than take over from the haircut. So in the front few sections, we're gonna pretty much work almost back to back with a very small gaps in between. And as we kind of come further towards the back of the head, we'll be leaving larger and larger gaps in between the foils so that we can really utilize the color for texture, but Dylan wants a fair amount of color in his hair so that through this front section, this is where we're really gonna focus our attention. And so when you see Dylan's hair, you're gonna have quite a lot of lightness going on through the front. Now, there's no color in Dylan's hair, so it's gonna be nice and easy to lift. I'm using blue powder bleach plus 20 volume, and I'm gonna be taking very fine slices. You'll see the rest of it as we work through, but I'm just gonna work with the hair in like a natural fall. I'm not gonna put it into any specific sectioning pattern or anything. I wanna work with Dylan's hair as I see it. That's why I cut the hair first so that I can kind of now come through and work the technique in a way that then is suitable for the haircut, not the other way around, where quite often we color hair and then we cut the hair down, especially when we're kind of creating restyle shapes. Really, I think important that we cut the hair first and then we can make sure that we can see where we place the hair on short hair only, personally. If you're gonna cut hair from right down by someone's waist and cut it into a lob, it's not gonna make a huge amount of difference. But if you're gonna cut someone's hair quite short, then it does make a difference. And I've done it so many times myself, where I thought to myself, I wish I had a foil there or a foil here to you know, help emphasize the style. So hopefully you take something away from this one and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the end result. That's where I'm at with this. So I'm gonna get on with the color and then we'll see you in just a minute. So we're gonna work right along Dylan's front hairline with this front section, just because Dylan wears his hair back sometimes, slicked back. So we've got to get this first one bang on the hairline so that we can have a nice clean blonde look going backwards. Otherwise, what we might end up with is like pa almost a patchy result at the front, even though it's not going to be patchy, obviously. Foil in, saturate it through, stick the hair to the foil, elevate the section, and then work our way back up towards the root area. Saturation is king. Okay, so the more product we can get in this foil, the better it will lift. We're gonna work that one right up to Dylan's hairline at the front. Next section, we're gonna come in, because it's quite short, the hair, kind of split it with our comb afterwards. Next section, we're gonna take directly behind the first section. So the first two sections are gonna be absolutely back to back. And that's gonna help Dylan to be able to see a lot more of the color when the hair's down. And then also when the hair's up, that front will be all blonde. Section, once I've put this third section in, I will move round to the opposite side. So on the third section, I'm gonna weave my section just to make sure that it's a little softer. And then I'm gonna decide whether I leave the bottom or the top of the section. So I'm probably gonna leave the bottom of this particular section, push that hair over there, because we'll catch that bit on the opposite side. Hold it by a third, hold it by a third again, cure the back just like so. Now I'm gonna run round to the front side on the opposite side, and then we're gonna pop those foils in that mirror what we've just done. And the reason I do this is because it's just easier to remember and they lift at a similar speed then, you know, you get that front, gets a nice consistent lift on it. And uh, we don't have to then work through one side and try and remember what we did. We know exactly what we did. We sliced the first one, we sliced the second one and we weaved the third one. A bit like a money piece, but for a dude. I guess a money piece is pretty unisexual though, to be honest, I mean, I can't see why it would be gender specific, but uh, just make sure that section's nice and thin so our saturation is absolutely bang on. As with all coloring techniques, really, you know, I think we've underestimated saturation for so long. Um, there are lots and lots of 
you know, videos that I've watched over the years where they've totally underestimated saturation or just teaching in general, especially if you wind the clock back a few years where saturation wasn't such a, an emphasized part of a technique. And now it's really kind of, everyone's beginning to realize that that is how you get these you know platinum results that is how you get hair to be super light and not ginger which is one of the things that dylan said he definitely didn't want to be in our consultation prior he said he's had his hair blonde before and it's always come up gingery and on natural level like dylan's here there is absolutely no reason unless he had tons of natural warmth or he got a box dye on his hair that we couldn't get it blonde even if he had loads of natural warmth providing we spent enough time lifting it and we were you know really diligent about our saturation and potentially resaturating those oils then you know we should be absolutely golden uh, with our result or platinum in Dylan's case but you know keeping that warmth at bay is just down to saturation thickness of your sections really plays an enormous part in the end result and how well your color lifts so we're on to section four now on this um, right hand side as you see it or Dylan's, Dylan's right hand side as well actually Got confused then, I was getting that mirror image effect in my head. So we're on section four, still weaving through these sections. And because we're in this kind of front section of the head, we are going to remain weaving these sections further back as well. Okay, so we're into the crown area now. We've really got to think about growth patterns here. We don't really want to get any colour into here. We only want the colour in the areas of the hair that are going to lay flattest. You know, when we've got product into here and we've kind of texturized it all and we've done a bit of this, bit of that, you know, we probably want maybe one foil maximum running through this area. But we also need to think about kind of where the rest of the hair is going to live. I'm going to say probably split this into two. Put one foil in through this area. Now this, this will just be a classic weave through here. Just because we want it to blend out a little bit more through this crown area. Dylan's got very strong straight hair. It's going to get, it's going to be very obvious if you put colour into places where the hair might stand up a little. So nice and simple. Just glue that section down. Lots of people talk about their foils slipping to me when they're doing foiling. And I think that's because that first section when they when they get that um, product on there there's not enough product to glue it down we could let go walk away go and get a coffee come back now there's plenty of product on there to hold it into position so we do need to kind of bear that in mind saturation 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 is the king and that saturation also helps to stop your fall slipping fold by a third fold by a third again elevate the section and shut the flap at the back now we're going to obviously work down the head now so we're going to put one more in i think probably just you have to work out what you've left out over here there's quite a lot of dark in there quite a lot of dark in here kind of just deciding what will be beneficial you know to the end result will putting another foil in there be a good thing for Dylan's hair. And if it's no, then don't do it just for the sake of it. Don't do it just because. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a little one in here, just a, just a very fine one, a dusty one, just to keep it connected, but not as bold as the previous sections. So this is a finer weave, guys, for sure. And if that happens to you, if you get all that hair bunching up, use your tail comb, nudge it up out of the way, pull the hair around, that's it and then saturate down. Once you've got that stuck, you can work up towards your root area, saturate through the ends, fold by a third, fold by a third, Bob's your uncle. Okay, so that's Dylan's color all applied. All we need to do now is have a coffee and wait for it to process. <laughs> We're gonna make sure that we lift it really clean, guys. Really watch the lift. I'm gonna talk to you a little bit as I check it and make sure that everybody kind of understands exactly where we're coming from with how to kind of assess when it is super, super clean. Uh, I don't think it's going to take a huge amount of time on Dylan's hair because as I say, it's not hugely dark, but we want it to be really, really light and clean. No gingeriness like he's experienced previously. So we'll let this process and then I'll come back in just a second when we've had a little time to cook and we'll show you each time we check it. And I check it probably every 10 minutes or so, just so that I know exactly where it's at in the journey. Okie dokie, so we're just gonna take a look at Dylan's hair uh, as it's processing. This is one of the last foils that I did. Now I only ever take sort of a cursory glance inside. And as we look at this now, we can see a fair amount of yellow in there still, mm, even some orangey sections. So that means that we're nowhere near cooked on that particular check. So we'll allow this to process for a bit longer. Let's have a look at another one. Yeah, we can see some ready orangey shades there. We can also see some uh, predominantly yellow throughout that section. So we know that we're not ready to go just yet um, on that particular check, but we'll give it another 10 or 15 minutes and then we'll come back and check then. 
Okay, so we're gonna take a little look at Dylan's hair another time. So we'll look at some of the foils a bit further forward. Uh, they were processing better anyway. But uh, we can see on these foils, we are definitely getting somewhere. Still need a little bit more time to ensure that Dylan's got no gingery warmth in his hair. And these back ones that we looked at previously are also definitely coming along. So another 10 minutes or so, Dylan will be a happy camper. <laughs> Uh, with no ginger in his hair. Okay, so another 15, 20 minutes or so has elapsed and I'm absolutely sure we're where we need to be now. Yeah, we've got a lovely clean result that will tone up beautifully. Now remember, we can't lift it past pale yellow because we will damage the hair irreparably. But we're right there now with our pale yellow result. So we'll get this off, get a little bit of toner on it and then style and show you all the results right at the end. Right then, here is Dylan's colour. Now this is what Dylan's colour will look like on those days where he gets out of bed and doesn't do his hair. Uh, this is also what his haircut will look like. You know, it's perfectly presentable. Nice bit of texture in there. Blonde really adding to the texture. So we're gonna style it a little bit with a bit of product because occasionally Dylan dips his hand in the old pot and gives his hair a little bit of a zhuzh. And he was just saying to me when we were waiting for his colour to process that, you know, loads of places have tried to help him in the past and say, you know, this is what, you know, how to style your hair, etc. But ultimately, it ends up not doing it, you know, for whatever reason. And of course, you know, that's obviously a great thing that they've tried to help Dylan, but it's okay for Dylan not to want to bother, you know, just for the virtue of seeing the versatility of the haircut and the finished result. Uh, because if you saw last week's haircut, you wouldn't have seen uh, it all finished nicely and done. You'd have seen it not dissimilar to this. Uh, but the only difference is it's nice and blonde now. So we've got that really strong blonde piece in the front so if Dylan pushes his hair back which he invariably tends to go with that style when he does his hair he's going to see that real shock of blonde in there um, and then ultimately when his hair is down uh, by leaving kind of gaps in between the foils we've created nice texture for Dylan's hair uh, not to look too blonde on top and dark through the sides because one of my big fears was was that through this sides because we're leaving these dark because of the length was that the top and the sides would look too disconnected uh, from one another. And so it was for me about creating those cl foils closer together around the front to give Dylan that kind of blonde impact, if you like. And then through this top section to create a little bit more texture and movement with the collar technique and the variation in weaves. And I think that's worked really, really nicely. So we'll just give you a little spinning tour of Dylan's haircut as is. Uh, for a nice after effect. We've got that nice tapered shape into the bottom here, built up towards his crown area, but still a lot less hair than Dylan had in that back section. Um, and I just tapered it in. He's got a, a, a quite a strong occipital bone there. And if we look at the color as well, in this particular instance, we're looking at a, a much more separated PC vibe in this crown area. And that's what I was saying about really focusing where we put those foils in this area we don't want it to look too strong and stripy and i think that's a nice amount of color in there coming through to this uh dylan's right hand side you know we've got the the, the color following through into the into the disconnection and feeding and bleeding into the side and because there's a disconnection and there's not too much color it does melt away really nicely and that really really strong piece that we put in the front of dylan's hair works really well for creating that ultra high impact blonde look and uh i was just asking dylan's he ever had this this sort of blonde before he said not successfully so i think we've achieved something today and uh hopefully this will suffice dylan as he goes back to uni and uh we can uh we can maybe do his hair again at some stage